Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about one of the most important game development frameworks out there, SDL. Now, SDL stands for the Simple Direct Media Layer, and actually, if you're a regular of this channel, this may sound very familiar, because I did a video a couple months back, maybe a month or so back, about SDL 3 and the current state of it, because it hadn't been released yet. Well, today it has been. Now, I'm going to show you something really quick from the SDL site, and you get an idea why this is as important as it is. So here we are on the webpage, I'm just going to go and refresh it a couple times, just notice on the right hand side here. You're going to see the kind of games that have been created using SDL. Sometimes it's just parts of SDL. They might use it for window management. Uh, they might use it for uh, input handling or sound audio or whatever. Like, look, Mortal Kombat, uh, Snapshot 3, uh, we've got um, Dead Cells, we've got XCOM Apocalypse and Half-Life. Yes, Valve uses SDL extensively uh, in all of their source games. V -v 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 uh, Life is Strange. It goes on and on. How about Counter-Strike? You may have heard of that one. So yeah, it's a very popular game framework. And the reason why we're talking about today is because SDL 3 has finally been released. Now, SDL 3 is the future generation of it, uh, and now where it gets a little confusing is it's technically SDL 3.2 that was just released, which is the first release version of SDL 3. Don't ask me to explain. I can't. Uh, so in terms of what functionality SDL provides, uh, it does things from audio, keyboard, mouse, joystick, graphics hardware via OpenGL and Direct3, so abstracts away the underlying renderer aspects. Uh, again, Valve uses it for a number of the games. Humble Bundle used it for a number of their games. It works on Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. Obviously, it's been ported to various different platforms as well. There are language bindings available for several different languages, although this is one of the gotchas with SDL3 versus SDL2 and one of those areas where you may prefer to go ahead and keep using SDL2. We'll get to that in just a minute. But you might want to know where this guy came from. And there is a company out there called Loki Games. Uh, they were a very small company, about 10 people total at their height, and they ported games over to Linux. They ultimately went bankrupt, but we as game developers actually owe them uh, a huge gratitude because what did they bring us? Well, for one, uh, they uh, supported the development of the SDL um, library itself, uh, and the guy who started SDL founded Loki and is now working at Valve, continuing to work on SDL, by the way. But also, we have OpenAL, which they started, uh, which is pretty insane. Uh, so uh, they did some pretty important tools. Uh, they also contributed to other successful tools out there like GCC and GDB. So they owe, we owe them a lot for the infrastructure of games that are available today, but especially about SDL3. So if you want to pour one out for Loki Entertainment, uh, they are the, the driving force behind a lot of this. So here we are with the SDL 3.2.0 release. And again, you can see here, announcing the SDL3 official release, SDL 3.0 is finally here, even though it's 3.2.0. Okay, I can't explain it, but just in case you're curious, this is the official release of SDL3, even though it's technically 3.2. In terms of the functionality or the highlights of what's in SDL3, uh, they have put a lot of effort into improving the documentation. There are also a number of example programs. You can even run them in your browser if you wish to do so. Uh, they have more consistent naming of the API across the board. Uh, main callbacks, you can actually run your program from callbacks instead of as main. Uh, GPU API, so this is one of those things that has changed in the world. We've moved very much from a fixed pipeline to a programmable GPU, and this um, has updated as a result. So you have access to modern 3D rendering and GPU compute functionality in a cross-platform way. You also have dialogues for doing like file, save, and open, etc., native to the UI of the, the app you're working with. In there, there is a file system access, so if you want to handle the native file system, System in a cross-platform way. It does that for you as well. Uh, or storage, uh, which could also be, I guess, web storage as well, or to memory devices, etc. Uh, we got camera APIs, pen APIs, logical audio devices. So each part of an app can get their own unique audio device to use. Uh, we have audio streams. We have uh, default audio. So it um, SCL3 automatically manages um, migrating to new physical hardware as devices are plugged in, ripped out, or changed. So if you plug in the headset, for example, it can deal with that fact. Um, 
properties API, process API, color space uh, support. So surfaces in the render, et cetera, can manage multiple color spaces. There is a clipboard API, better keyboard input, uh, customizing virtual keyboards, high DPI support is dramatically improved, and uh, app metadata API as well. So what you see here is all of the stuff that you need to deal with, the fiddly little stuff about the hardware level is what SDL takes care of for you. And on, on top of the audio input, uh, graphics, and so on. Uh, so that is why so many game engines out there, things like, again, Valve's Source Engine, build on top of SDL because it takes care of a lot of the cross-platform gook Gree muck, uh, if you wish. So, and it looks like they're doing even more. So, you got new modern things like touchscreen support and so on, uh, Apple pencils, that kind of stuff. So, uh, the other big thing, obviously, is going to be that new GPU API because that is just the way that the world has moved. So, some very cool things in this particular release. Uh, if you are interested, if you're currently using SDL2 and you want to migrate over to SDL3, uh, they do have basically a breakdown of what has changed. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty extensive, so there is quite a bit here. So if you are very far along in an SDL2 project, you're probably better off to just finish it. Uh, if you're starting a new project or you're a little ways in, probably a better idea to switch over to SDL3. But the good news is there is a migration guide showing you what is new in that change. So uh, that is the migration guide. Now I mentioned earlier on about language bindings, and this is another uh, kind of a go, no go area for some developers. The really cool thing about SDL um, is it's been around forever and it has bindings to just about every programming language you can think of. Ada, Beef, C Sharp, D, Go, Haskell, Hollywood, Lua, OCaml, Odin, Pascal, Python, Rust, TypeScript, Zig, V, Nim, Crystal, and of course all those things that support native C to C++. So again, like C++ can work with C automatically and things like that. But there are language bindings for most major programming languages out there for SDL2. Now when it comes to SDL Three, it is a slightly different story. It's not that bad, uh, but right now the only official bindings available are for C Sharp, D, and Rust. Now, I, I think probably the one that most people would be looking for would be C Sharp, so at least they've got that one there. Uh, and of course, SDL works with both C and C++, and if your programming language just natively just works with C and C++ things, like so for example, like Objective-C, uh, you should be good to go with SDL as well. Uh, but yeah, official bindings, uh, we went from a lot of them, two, three. Uh, so just one of those things to be aware of when you're dealing with uh, SDL3. And no doubt in time that the language binding situation is going to change. SDL is one of the most popular frameworks out there for a very good reason. And in terms of popularity, I'm going to give you an idea of games made at least using SDL. So this, they could be using it just for input or for audio or for setting up the initial draw window that they're going to hand over to Direct3D or Vulkan or OpenGL or whatever. But this is the number of games that were found on Steam that have the SDL DLLs distributed with them. And you get an idea, some of these games, Stardew Valley, Portal, Hades, uh, Half-Life Alex, Bellatro, uh, Half-Life 2, Gary's Mod, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Dead Cells, you, you name it. There's just an absolute ton of games out here. This is some of the more popular ones. I, I actually don't know what the default sorting is here, uh, but uh, this is just giving you an idea. So let's do uh, online player count and get an idea. Some of the more popular things there uh, or the star rating, again, most popular games there. It is just a hugely important library slash framework out there. So that's why the release of SDL3 is such a big deal. You see up here, there's actually 5,732 products on Steam using SDL. So yeah, definitely a big deal in that regard. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. The SDL or Simple Direct Media Layer version 3 is finally here, even though it's technically 3.2.0. So let me know what you think of SDL, of this release, of what's new, uh, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.